turns out our freedom might be the freedom to put the brakes on. <coughs> then we see that Ellen White says, certainly she's not the first, but closest to home, Ellen White says, that what we put into our mind, the entertainment, the reading, the choosing to do certain behaviors and all of that and doing good and, and, take, and, and the Buddhists say compassion med meditation. The Dalai Lama talks about, and Tibetan Buddhism talks a lot about compassion meditation where you systematically condition your mind to feel compassion habitually to make that your operating system. And what it ends up you're doing, according to what Ellen White says and what, what the Tibetan Buddhist scholars say, what it ends up that you're doing is the place where the actual bills get written, that you can't just in the moment cause, because that's kind of, you think you're causing it, but then <laughs> they already, they bubbled up. That part turns out it's programmed by some things that we do or don't do. And you know, you go, well, so then what makes you decide to do or don't do those? <laughs> Put the hands up. Now, I'll back up even further. All that I just said, depends on every little process down to the <coughs> finest little causal smallest piece of matter at smallest unit of energy level being just mechanical like this, like following the rules, like I hit that, it fell over. Something hits something, there's an attraction, there's an activation, there's a release of neurotransmitter, it's all mechanical processes, it's all following the rules. It turns out that no matter and no energy if you go back to the smallest pieces that it comes in, none of it actually is limited to following mechanical rules. Because when you get so small that you're the smallest little piece of something so that if we made you any smaller, you turn into energy. Even that smallest piece of stuff that hasn't even turned into energy. And the smallest little units of energy, the smallest little photon, whatever, those don't follow mechanical Newtonian cause and effect. It turns out that when you watch how they behave, they appear to behave without any apparent prompt or cause. They're not, you can't see a cause, they just do. If you're watching a subatomic particle, uh, you're watching to see a, a subatomic particle that's released from a decaying radioactive uh, substance. You'll watch a particular atom and see if it lets off a particle that has, say, a 12-hour <coughs> or whatever. You can watch it for 12 hours. That means it would have um, half a chance in 12 hours of having decay. So what determines when or even if during the 12 hours of that particular one? It is absolutely indistinguishable by all physical means <coughs> from one that is going to decay even if it doesn't. What's causing it? We have no idea. So some people argue, now we're talking quantum physics again, some people argue that it is deterministic. <laughs> They're arguing that it is cause and effect, but it's just in another dimension that the cause happens. But they don't know that. We don't have access to those dimensions. And others are saying, it's actually random. It's a truly random thing. It would be a fair coin in a coin toss. And there's nothing that causes it because the quantum world outside of four dimensions is entirely random. Nothing is causing anything. And you can argue that when you go to five dimensions, you lose time zero, so it doesn't have to be, okay, 12 o'clock, 1201, 1202, and you can't go back. Turns out that in five dimensions, it's just a dimension. You can go back and forth in it like I'm going back and forth in space on the X continuum right now. So how can you have cause and effect when there's no before and after? Can you have an effect and then you go, wait for it, oh, there's the cause. You can't, cause has to come first. Cause is a construct that we've come up with to describe how things happen since we're locked in, usually locked in, usually. But that's far from established and we have evidence that it actually, we're not locked in, we can circle back and have an influence on the past with our brains. So that's pretty weird, isn't it? That's where the fish comes in. Yes? From the fish. <laughs> I really need to get that fish taken care of. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I find that fun. Oh, I want to 
to say one thing. I want to say one thing first. Um, every quiz you ever have in this class, hand pump, hand pump, every quiz that you ever have in this class, there's going to be a certain question on it, most likely. There's no way this question will not be on your midterm. There's no way it will not be on your final. There's no way it will not be on multiple quizzes, all right? I believe, so it will say something like, your instructor, according to your instructor, what should be the basis of every philosophical or intellectual, theological uh, enterprise undertaking process, discipline, <coughs> any way I say that, any pursuit you have in philosophy or theology, now let me see your hands if you've taken my classes before. Somebody say the H word. Humility. Humility. Fix people up, would you? I'm, I'm, I'm almost out. Go around and take their, if they said it, give them a curse color, okay? Just take their word for it. Understand the trust. Um, why would we have humility? Because Jesus said so. Well, that's a good enough reason for me, but not everybody has the same value on what Jesus says is what I, what, what I do. Um, but Jesus went to great lengths to say humility was, a, was the basis of it all. But let's go away from that. Let's just talk about reasoning. Um, have you ever known somebody that's significantly retarded? Mm. Now, I'm not, I'm not, not like they're just no, they're, they're, no, not, they're not like they're willing to say to the them because they're really not and they just are sort of doofy or and you know they're probably smarter than you. I know. I mean, somebody who's developmentally disabled, like with Down syndrome or oxygen deprivation. You've known people like that, or you've seen them represented somehow. Let's just say, for sake of discussion, and and I already recognize that the way we measure IQ has all kinds of problems, cultural and ethnic and linguistic, and just the whole scientific basis for the whole thing. However, you and I are not going to argue that somebody's so profoundly retarded that they can't do their own zipper management is probably a lower IQ than you are. And the test is going to be at least good enough at detecting that to get that right almost every day. Right? And that probably Stephen Hawking and Albert Einstein um, and, and uh, Buckminster Fuller and uh, uh, Paul Erdős, th those guys, uh, Isaac Newton, Shakespeare, probably have a higher IQ than anybody in this room. Don't you think that's a fair thing to say? They probably are more intelligent. So we all probably actually, is that true? Do you think that's probably true that they probably have, a, those guys I mentioned probably have a higher IQ than anyone in this room? No matter what you think about the IQ process. They're more intelligent. They have more horses under the hood in here, okay? Um, let's just say for sake of discussion, since you're in college, we're going to say probably nobody here would take an IQ test and do your best on it on a good day and score like in two digits. You probably, honestly, <coughs> people here that have like a 95. There might be, might be a 90 or 95. You're you're not a physics major and or a math major and getting a lot of good grades without a lot of help. If you are, you know it. You, you may be able to get through with some major or whatever, but we could all agree. You recognize on this campus that there's guys that have, and gals that have horsepower that most people don't have. Is that true? They're smarter. That's it, they're smarter. They have something works better in that kind of way. Now, you may be a better musician, and maybe you're not. Maybe you suck at everything compared to them. <laughs> I found people like that. I go, well, I can admit it. They say, well, watch this. And I say, I suck at that too, I guess. You know, I watch some, some uh, nine year old girl shredding on the electric guitar, and I'm going, well, I'll just get rid of all five of my guitars and just forget we ever had the discussion because I can never do that. You know, it's ridiculous. You get somebody whose fingers will only go four notes, to, you know, going all over the keyboard in their three. And I'm going, why have I taken lessons since 1971? You know, it doesn't do me any good at all compared to them. They're better than, better than me. Um, Let's say that you and I, though, just for sake of discussion, let's say we have about 120 IQ, okay? Just not too gifted, but gifted. You know, kind of doing okay in college kind of thing, 150, 120, we're in there together. Well, let's 
say we're all right there for now. Now let's say we bring in somebody who has, say, an 85 IQ. And every time they take it, they get the 85 IQ. They can't ever get through algebra, but they can kind of, you know, there's jobs they can do. They need someone to help them once in a while when they get confused with their checking account, and that's not going to ever work out too well, so they're always going to have to have some help with that. But they, they, decent people, they do their thing, they, they can drive, they have to have a little help to pass them to the written, but they, 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 they know things. And they have opinions, go to church, but you know, they're not, they're not 120 like you and I. You watch them trying to solve some problem. And you recognize how to solve it. And if you're saying, well, somebody like that, they can solve this problem. Okay, well then, in your illustration, in your own mind, back it down then to someone who like eats rubber bands and stuff. Back it down as far as you need to so that you go, I fully recognize that I look at that person and I go, they do not get a lot of things that I get. And you could hear them explaining something to one of their friends. And you're going, And you almost want to, and then you go, mm, then what would be the point? Do you, know, do you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be insensitive. <coughs> just tell me you don't have a sense of that. That there's a reality there that some people are a lot smarter than other people. And that you've seen it when someone is profoundly less intelligent than you are. And you look at, and you hear the things they say when they're doing the best they can to explain something. They're being honest, and they're explaining, and you're going, best they can do? I guess it is. Now, if we have 120, and let's say they have, say, 90, that's a 30-point difference, right? So now let's just go to 150. There probably are, pretty sure, there's some people in here, not very many. There might be two or three people in here that have 150 IQ or higher. At the most, there's two or three people in here that have 150 IQ or higher. And they are, they get it. They might not get everything. You know, like Penny and Sheldon. Sheldon has a question for Penny or like quantum electrodynamics or something. And Penny says, well, I don't know what she says to Penny. Who's Radiohead? I don't know. So I mean, yeah, there's certain facts that some people have that others don't have, but does this seem hard to believe that there might be somebody in this room that actually their IQ has the same kind of difference with most of the rest of us, or our average in here. There's as much difference between their IQ and ours as ours with somebody who's so retarded they, they could really be high school. Not very really well, not without sort of special ed. Think about that. Now, the same span in difference of complexity of thought and, and brain power between them and us at that end and them and us at that end, that means they listen to the best we can do when we say something, when, when we're trying as hard as we can to explain something. And they are over here having a similar process going, oh, that's you get that? Even if you have 150 IQ, you're like one birth in Costa Rica or in Seoul, Korea from someone else who gets born, and by the time they're five, they're listening to your brilliance and reading your dissertation and going, oh, geez. You got that? There's no limit to how intelligent somebody could be, and then they're just one birth away from somebody else looking at and listening and going, man, I'm so lonely on this planet. That's a pretty profound basis for not taking our own ideas all that seriously. Is it not? It means no matter how, how committed we are and how rational we're trying to be, all we gotta do is find somebody with 30 or 40 more IQ points than us, and, and they're going to look at what we've said and say, yeah, I see what you did there, but you know, what would be the point? Why, I mean, I don't even have a basis for this. Question. All 
all of us, even if we're 170. We could just have someone that's 200 that comes along and makes us look like a fool. So why would we be arrogant instead of humble? We need to realize there's no, there's nothing we could be saying that wouldn't sound like idiocy to somebody just that much more intelligent. And also, what we showed on the board and um, <coughs> illustrated the four dimensions, X, Y, and Z, and T. And then, and then we said, now look, that's our four-dimensional reality. Let's compare it to stick figure guy on the board, Flatlander. How does Flatlander understand our processes and what we've got going that involve the extra dimension? How did it how? How can cartoon dude do that? It can't be done. There's no way to even have a concept. And we know, we are smart enough to know with our four dimensions that there has to be more dimensions. We see them impacting our four dimensions. We see the shadows of five dimension objects in four dimensions. We can create the shadows. Um, how seriously should we be taking our flat? How universal should we think that the best, wisest human sensibility or theory ever could be when it's just four dimensions? And there's all these other dimensions, we have to be willing to say, hey, look, there is stuff that we never, never could wrap our minds around. You know, I gotta talk about the fish on Tuesday. We'll talk about the fish on Tuesday. Have a great weekend.